Today's lesson is called Truffles, the Unlikely Treasure. Hello, everyone. I'm Helen, and I'm Roger. Today, we're going to talk about a type of food that is very close to my heart. Oh, it is. Yep. If someone were to ask me what is your favorite food, I would probably say truffles. Really? Yep. However, truffles aren't something that you would normally eat directly, like mushrooms. Instead, they're used to add flavor to other dishes, like pasta. They're especially popular in Italy and France. How about you, Roger? Well, I don't believe I've ever had them before. Are these available in like the local traditional market? Not really. They're usually found in specialty food supermarkets, and since they're European food, they're a type of European food. They're usually not available in local markets. But you can probably find them somewhere in Taiwan here. So maybe if someone were to buy some for me, I might have the chance to try one or two. I think I got that hint. Okay, indeed, I am hinting there because as we're going to find out today, truffles. Ain't cheap. They're not cheap at all. They're quite expensive, so they are a specialty, and that's why we're calling them the unlikely treasure. They are a treasure. You can't have these at every meal, but、uh, you know, if you got the money and you have some special connections, then you can probably have some. That's right, and they're pretty special in terms of taste. So maybe not everyone would enjoy the taste of truffles, but certainly a lot of people love them, and some people think maybe they're not so great. But you like them, right? So they must taste good, huh? I like them, yeah. Well, for someone like me who hasn't had them before, what exactly do they taste like? They taste very earthy. They taste almost like a mushroom, but the taste is more intense, and you can smell them a mile away. Really, they have a very strong flavor, a very deep earthy flavor, because while、well, they're found in the ground. Wow, found in the ground. Maybe I could dig some up sometime, but、uh, that, of course, is easier said than done, as we're going to find out. So, hey, let's find out what truffles are all about. Let's listen to the first part of our lesson right now. Truffles, the unlikely treasure. The most expensive food in the world is neither saffron nor caviar. It's the truffle, an odd little fungus that looks like a dirty, wrinkled potato. These funny-looking lumps are in such demand that in 2007, a Macau business owner paid over 300,000 U.S. dollars for one truffle weighing 1.5 kilograms. That's one mighty expensive mushroom. Hello, first part. We see a word called fungus. This word is a noun, fungus, fungus species. Fungus's plural form is fungi. F U N G I, fungi. For example, mushrooms are a kind of fungus. Mushrooms are a kind of fungus. Another word to add is a noun, white fungus, which means white fungus or fungus. So we can say people often cook white fungus with lotus seed to make a delicious sweet soup. 人们时常将白木耳与莲子一起煮美味的甜汤。接着，我们看到的单字是名词 lump， 通常指无固定形状的团、块状物、肿块，像是 The boy got a lump on his forehead from running into a wall。小男孩额头上有一个因为撞上墙壁所留下的肿块。又或者说 ，Brian is a master potter who can turn lumps of clay into beautiful pots and vases。Brian 是个熟练的陶艺大师，他能将粘土团变成美丽的湖及花瓶。Okay, it's time for us to discuss the contents of today's lesson, and we're calling them truffles here, the unlikely treasure. A treasure is like something that you really value, right? Yeah, a treasure is something that is rare and often that costs a lot. Like truffles, as we're going to find out. Truffles—that's kind of a cute little word here. But here in the first paragraph, it says the most expensive food in the world is neither saffron nor caviar. It's the truffle, an odd little fungus that looks like a dirty, wrinkled potato. Now, notice in this sentence we've got the neither nor construction. The most expensive food in the world is neither saffron nor caviar. So it isn't saffron and it isn't caviar either. 
What do you know? It's actually the truffle. I did not know that. I did not know truffles are the most expensive food in the world. Yeah, I didn't know that either. But I did know that they were quite expensive because they're not easy to find, and they're wild. So you can't really cultivate them. You can't grow them in a field. You can't produce them. Can't produce them yourself. You can't just plant seeds in the ground、no. and have them sprout in the spring or something like that.、Mm-mm. Doesn't work that way. Okay, so I guess because of those reasons, truffles are very expensive. Saffron. That's kind of like a special sort of、uh, flavoring, I guess, a spice. And then we've got caviar here. Which is some kind of、uh, funky fish paste from France, right? I think they're、uh, fish eggs. Fish eggs,、mm. caviar. I've never had those either. But in any case,、uh, the truffle is more expensive than both those two foods. And here we've got the word fungus. Like mushrooms are a kind of fungus, right? Mushrooms are a kind of fungus, and fungi, which is the plural of fungus, tend to grow in the dark, and they also grow spontaneously. You can't really plant them with seeds, so they're often found in humid, wet areas. Fungus sounds like something that would be bad for you. Aren't isn't fungus kind of poisonous or something? Well, some of them could be, but other types of fungus are good for you, and you can eat them, and they're quite tasty. Okay, so I guess、uh, we're learning here that、uh, truffles are a kind of fungus, and if you have to describe its appearance, if you need to describe what it looks like, well, it's a dirty, wrinkled potato. Now I know what a potato looks like, but potatoes. Skin is smooth, okay, but they're saying it looks like a wrinkled potato, like some people over 90 years old. Perhaps they have wrinkled skin, so this potato would be wrinkled. Right, wrinkled. If something is wrinkled, it has lots of small lines or folds in it. So when we get older, our skin becomes wrinkled. Or wrinkled clothing. You can iron wrinkled clothing to make it smooth. I must say that you don't have any wrinkles at all on your face, there, Helen. But、uh, unfortunately.、Wow. I've got quite a few around my eyes, wrinkles. But、uh, we should note here, wrinkle is being used as a verb, and here a verb becoming an adjective. A wrinkled potato or a potato that has wrinkles. Now here's the next sentence. It says these funny-looking lumps are in such demand that in 2007. A Macau business owner paid over three hundred thousand U.S. dollars for one truffle, weighing one point five kilograms. Ooh, that seems to be a lot of money for someone to spend for something we're describing as a funny-looking lump. A lump here—that's kind of like a, a small amount of something. Yeah, that's like a, a round piece of something that's shaped irregularly, and truffles usually aren't that big, so it's quite rare to have a truffle weighing over one kilogram. And it's not that surprising to pay that much money for it because they usually don't grow that big. So, you, how big would be a truffle weighing one point five kilograms, like、uh, your average average size potato? No, it would be around the size of a small watermelon. Oh, that's、uh, that's pretty big. So you can probably make that last for quite some time if you're using it mainly for flavoring. I guess you don't eat the whole thing at once, right? As you said earlier, you use it as a, as a flavoring. No, you would probably scrape some over your pasta or your rice or anything that requires a, a bit of additional flavor. So you actually use truffle very sparingly. So 1.5 kilograms of truffle can go a long way. Okay, well, it's going to have to go a long way because this Macau business owner paid a lot of money for it, and we're saying that、uh, these funny-looking lumps, these truffles, are in such demand. They're in so much demand that, as a result, someone paid a lot of money for it. So here we've got the word demand, and demand is a noun. Here it just means when people want a lot of something. Right, it's a firm statement that expresses a wish or desire. So, for instance, politicians must listen to the demands of their citizens if they want to be elected.、Mm, that makes a lot of sense. It could also be a verb to demand something. I remember a long time ago, I was having、uh, dinner with my family, and my sister did not eat her pickle. And I asked her for it politely, and she said, "No, you can't have it." And finally, she just wasn't eating it. So I said, "I demand your pickle. You must give me your pickle." 
That's demand being used as a verb. Here, it's being used as a noun. They are in demand. So much demand that someone paid a fortune for one. That's one mighty expensive mushroom. So mighty. Does that mean the、uh, truffle is really strong? It just means that it's very expensive. It's more expensive than usual. Indeed. So that's one extremely expensive mushroom, and a mushroom, of course, is a kind of fungus. And a truffle is being described here as a fungus as well. Let's find out some more about truffles in the next part of our lesson. Let's listen. What is it that makes truffles such a treasure? Well, in addition to tasting delicious. They have a uniquely attractive scent that makes people want to eat them. They're highly valued because they're very hard to find. Truffles grow in the wild, and unlike most mushrooms, they grow entirely underground on the roots of trees. Truffle hunting pigs or dogs are needed to sniff out these hidden gems. Pigs are the traditional choice, but being as truffle crazy as humans, they have a tendency to eat the truffles they find. Third part, we see the word "scent." This word is a noun, meaning the smell, the scent. For example, the wolf followed the scent left behind by his prey. The wolf followed the scent left behind by his prey. The wolf followed the scent left behind by his prey. The wolf followed the scent left behind by his prey. The wolf followed the scent left behind by his prey. The wolf followed the scent left behind by his prey. The wolf followed the scent left behind by his prey. The wolf followed the scent left behind by his prey. The wolf followed the scent left behind by his prey. The wolf followed the scent left behind by his prey. The wolf followed the scent left behind by his prey. The wolf followed the scent left behind by his Sarah sniffed at the soup suspiciously before eating. Sarah 在喝这碗汤之前，狐疑地闻着它。而 sniff 除了当动词之外，还可以当名词使用。所以可以说 ，After one sniff, I knew the milk was sour. 闻了一下之后，我知道牛奶酸掉了。另外，补充一个 sniff 的片语，可以用 sniff out 来表示搜索、找到、找出，有指经过一番努力达成。举例来说 ，Wilson eventually sniffed out who was stealing funds from the company accounts. Wilson 最后终于找出是谁盗用公司户头的基金了。再来，我们看到单字 gem 这个字是名词，指难能可贵的人或物或宝石。例如 ，To Harris, the model car that his grandpa left him is a gem. 对 Harris 来说，他外公留给他的那台玩具车模型是很珍贵的东西。又或者说。Mary wore a ring that had real gems on it. Mary 戴了一个戒指，上面有真的宝石。Okay, so we begin the second part of our lesson with a question: What is it that makes truffles such a treasure? What do these truffles have that make them so valuable? Why do people want to spend so much money for one little truffle? Well, in addition to tasting delicious, they have a uniquely attractive scent that makes people want to eat them. In other words, they have a particular smell that's very attractive that attracts people, and the smell is also unique. So, unique here is being used as an adverb, uniquely, which means that it's very special, it's very unusual, or it's very good. So, this type of scent is uniquely, specially attractive to people. I suppose you could use this to describe chou dofu. It has a uniquely attractive scent, although I don't really like chou dofu myself, so I don't think I would use the word attractive here. I would say chou dofu has a uniquely disgusting scent. That's my opinion, though. I think other people like chou dofu. Do you, do you like chou dofu, Helen? I think I would agree with you on the smell of chou dofu. It is uniquely disgusting to smell, but once you eat it, it's not that disgusting. That's what they say. Although I think it tastes as bad as it smells, but again, that is my opinion. But、uh, we're describing truffles as having this uniquely attractive scent, which is like a smell, especially if it's something good. Like what's the scent of your perfume, for example? And that scent makes people want to. Eat them. Here in the next、uh, sentence, it says they're highly valued because they're very hard to find. I guess that's one way something becomes very expensive. It's kind of rare. Right. They grow in the wild, and unlike most mushrooms, they grow entirely underground on the roots of trees. Wow. 
Yep. Pretty weird. That's、uh, how do you get at them if they're growing underground? Well, they're difficult to find because you can't see them. So what people do is that they use truffle hunting pigs or dogs to sniff out these hidden gems. Right. So those specially trained hunting pigs and dogs are needed to <laughs> sniff out these hidden gems. So here we've got the word sniff as a verb that just means you smell something with your nose. <laughs> Sniff, sniff, sniff. So they need to sniff out these hidden gems. Sniff there with the preposition out to sniff something out. That means you're trying to smell in order to find the location of something. Like、uh, you know, rats are always trying to sniff out where the cheese is. And these are hidden gems. If something's hidden, well, you just can't find it. Right, they're hidden underground, and they're considered gems because they're so expensive,、um, so rare that they're like jewels. Indeed. Now, pigs are the traditional choice. That's、uh, the kind of animal they usually use to sniff out these hidden gems. But being as truffle crazy as humans, they have a tendency to eat the truffles they find. And I don't blame them here. Pigs. Like the smell of truffles as well, they have this tendency to eat those truffles when they find them. So I guess you gotta watch out to make sure that pig doesn't eat it before you can get at it. So here we've got the word tendency. That's kind of like、um, the possibility or the high possibility that something will happen. Right, tendency refers to an aspect of a person's character or an animal's character that is shown through behavior or action. So here, the pig's tendency is to eat the truffle once it finds it because it is also truffle crazy. Whereas dogs, on the other hand, can be trained to look for the truffles without eating them. Okay, but the, I guess they still prefer the pigs here to sniff out those truffles. Let's find out some more about truffles in the next part of our lesson. Let's listen. The best ones are found in France and Italy, where the truffle hunting season is short. Every fall and winter, truffle hunters take their specially trained animals out to the woods to find and dig up these diamonds of the kitchen. From there, the truffles find their way to the plates of devoted diners around the world. 最后第三部分，我们看到一个片语。Find one's way to 或 into 加名词表示到达点点点。这个片语字面意思是找到去点点点的路或到达目的地，可以用来比喻经历波折或险阻后变成某种结果。举例来说 ，Many of the young man's ideas about marketing found their way into the company's sales plan。那个年轻人提出的许多行销点子，最后总算成了那间公司销售计划的一部分。另外，补充另一个与 find 相关的片语，可以用 find one's feet 来指适应环境。这个片语以找到脚的意向，表示站稳脚步，通常用来形容某人以适应新的环境。所以可以说 ，It didn't take long for Hannah to find her feet after starting her new job. Hannah 展开新工作不久后就适应了环境。So in the third part of our lesson, we talk about where truffles are found, and we find out that the best ones, the best truffles, are found in France and Italy, where the truffle hunting season is short. So truffles can't be found throughout the year; they can only be found during certain parts of the year, and it's every fall and winter when truffle hunters take their specially trained animals out to the woods to find and dig up these diamonds of the kitchen. Wow, what a way to describe them—the diamonds of the kitchen. So again, we've got these specially trained animals, maybe pigs, maybe dogs. So they take. The dogs or the pigs out to the woods, out to a forest, and then they kind of sniff around. They try to sniff out these truffles that are growing on the roots of trees, and we're describing again the truffles as being diamonds of the kitchen. So, do they look like diamonds or something? I've I've never seen a truffle before. They could look like diamonds if the diamonds are big, because truffles are irregularly shaped. They're not very smooth. Sometimes they have edges. So yeah, they could be described as looking like diamonds. But、uh, I think they're describing them as being very valuable because diamonds, of course, are extremely expensive. These are a very expensive item that、uh, lots of people want to spend a 
lot of money on. And here in the、uh, final sentence, it says, "From there, the truffles find their way to the plates of devoted diners around the world." So there, they sniff them out of the ground, they dig them up, and then the truffles find their way. To the plates of those diners around the world. So to find one's way, that means you basically are able to get from one place to another. Right. Usually, to find one's way to something means you go from point A to point B without a particular route. Sometimes you arrive at difficulty in getting to your destination. So here, truffles begin in the ground, underground, in forests, and they end up in very expensive, fancy, high-class restaurants. So it's a sometimes. Complicated route that they go to to arrive from the forest to the restaurant. But it happens, and of course, if you are a devoted diner, that means you are devoted to those truffles. You love them. You've loved them most of your life, and you're very happy to see one arrive on your plate. Devoted, of course. So that reminds me of the old Olivia Newton-John song, "Hopelessly Devoted to You," as well as other songs that use the word "devoted." A man can be devoted to his wife, for example. And vice versa. Okay, that brings us to the end of our explanation for today. Let's listen now to our Chinese teacher. <音楽>各位同学，大家好，我是 Hanny。我们来看今天的文法重点。课文一开始提到 ，the most expensive food in the world is neither saffron. Nor caviar. 世界上最昂贵的食物不是番红花，也不是鱼子酱。好，这边我们来学习 neither nor 的用法。也有人念作 neither nor。好 ，neither nor 是配对连接词，它必须连接两个词性相同的字词，用来表达说既不怎么样，也不怎么样，两个都不怎么样。例如说 ，He neither smokes nor drinks， 就表示他不抽烟也不喝酒。好，那么你用 neither nor 来连接主词的时候，要特别注意哦。动词要跟比较靠近的主词一致，也就是说，动词是要配合 nor 后面那个主词来做变化。像是 neither she nor I like doing the dishes， 他跟我都不喜欢洗碗。那我们句子里面的动词就是要配合离他最靠近的主词 neither she nor I， 就是配合 I。所以我们后面是用 like 而不是用 likes 来当动词。好，下面补充一个相关用法 ，neither 可以摆在否定陈述的后面，去引导子句来表达说也不怎么样。那我们刚刚提到说呢 ，neither 引导子句，那就表示说它摆在子句的句首嘛。这时候这个子句就要用倒装句型，也就是用 neither 加 be 动词加主词，或者是用 neither 加助动词加主词。例如 ，Eddie has never been to Europe。And neither has Lily. Eddie 从来没有去过欧洲 ，Lily 也是。所以这边 neither has Lily， 他把助动词 has 移到 Lily 的前面，形成倒装了。好，接着读到课文第一部分的第二句，他说 ，These funny-looking lumps are in such demand that in 2007, a Macau business owner paid over 300,000 U.S. dollars for one truffle weighing 1.5 kilograms. 这种外形好笑的块状物需求量很大，也就是在讲松露啦。在二零零七年呢，有一位澳门企业家，他用超过三十万美元去购买一朵重达一点五公斤的松露。好，这边我们来学习 such 表示如此怎么样的用法。such 后面呢要接名词，再接 that 子句，可以用来表达说如此怎么样，以至于怎么样。那么 such 后面呢接不可数名词或是名词复数的时候，它的句型就是。是 such 加上不可数名词，或是加名词复数。那你可以在这个名词的前面搭配形容词。好，那如果是接单数名词的话，句型就是 such a 加上单数可数名词。那一样，你也可以在名词前面加形容词，像是 It was such a funny video that we watched it again。那个影片非常好笑，我们又再重看了一遍。好，顺便补充一下，如果你要用 so 来表达，那记得 so 后面要接形容词或副词，它的句型就是 so 加上形容词或副词再加 that 子句。像刚刚的例句呢，就可以改成 The video was so funny that we watched it again。同学们只要记得啊， such 的后面是要接名词。
so 的后面要接形容词或副词，这样就不会弄错喽。好，以上是今天重点整理，我们回顾今天的单词吧。Wrinkle. Paul accidentally wrinkled the papers when he put them in his bag. Lump. The worker shoveled lumps of coal into the fire that powered the train's steam engine. Demand. The increase in construction has raised the demand for building materials. Uniquely, for centuries the country occupied a uniquely powerful position in the world. Scent. Michelle has always loved the scent of freshly cut grass. Sniff. The dog sniffed at the visitors and then wagged its tail in welcome. Tendency. Nick has a tendency to speak too fast when he's feeling excited. Devoted. The devoted fan has been to over 20 of the band's concerts. 